All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the 27 best marketing tools to crush it for 2019. But before we do, make sure wherever you're coming from, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, whatever platform you are on. So let's talk about this before we go into the tools themselves. The one thing I want to say about tools is that you think of yourself as Batman. Batman's got a tool belt. He's, you know, he can throw his smoke bombs, all these different things. But it doesn't matter what kind of tools you have in a tool belt if you don't know how to use them. So I might name 27 different tools in here, but maybe you only need one. Maybe one you're equipped to use with. Don't think that you need to add 27 things to your tool belt because one of the big mistakes I made with my career early was saying, I want to check out this tool. Let's check out this tool. Let's just check out this tool. Nowadays, I get tools for free. So yes, there's still that level of overwhelm, but you know, it's not like I'm going out there and trying to pay for all these new tools all the time. So find one that resonates the most with you first and then go with it. Because let's say a tool like Hrefs, there's so many different things within that tool, like 50 other tools within the tool. So then if you add like 50 tools times 50, like you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Focus on what you think you can actually use and actually get the most um, value from. And then, and then you can think about adding other tools, all right? So without further ado, let's check out the first one. We're going to talk about the one SEO tool you aren't using, but should. Most people probably aren't using this. So what is it, Eric? It's Google Trends. And why? What's the point? A big factor in Google's algorithm is brand mentions. Everyone thinks it's links, it's content. Brand mentions, if I had to take a guess, I don't have stats on this like Google does, I would say it accounts for probably 15, 20% of their algorithm. What I found is, when my brand mentions go through the roof, so does my traffic. And I'm not talking about my traffic for my name. Brand mentions are people Googling your name. So mine is neilpatel.com, it's people Googling Neil Patel. And I get around 60 something thousand brand mentions a month in which people are not just searching, but they're clicking through to my site. And as you get more brand mentions, what you'll find is your overall traffic keeps going up. That's how I rank number one for online marketing or you know, page one for SEO. It's not that I'm building all these links. A lot of people can write amazing content, but when you have the brand mentions, it tells Google, hey, people trust this brand. They're not creating fake news. They're creating legitimate stuff that people want to keep reading. So we should rank it higher. This tool is called gong.io. So gong.io is a massive advantage. You know why? Because when you are Getting on a call with somebody, you don't know what kind of behavior you're, you, you have. So if we look at the screen right here, I can see I spent 45% uh, of the time talking uh, and then the other person on the call spent 55% of the time. So th like, that's cool. Gong is a sales intelligence tool. They, it starts to see patterns, right? It's, it starts to see the topics that I'm talking about. So you can see here, it senses that I'm talking about pricing it uh, talking about moving forward. We have small talk in the beginning. And I, I remember for that specific period of time, we did have small talk. And on the other side of things, look at these interaction stats over here. So you can see I have, there's a talk ratio, there's a the longest monologue, which is I guess, you know, the longest each person has talked. There is a longest customer story, so that's three minutes. Interactivity and patience is 0.65 seconds. So you can see, not only for myself, but you can see people on your team, how they behave. How patient are they? Uh, how long do they talk? Um, if their talk ratio, if like, for example, if I spent 75% of the time talking, it's probably too skewed towards me, so I need to make adjustments there, right? So that to me is something like if I see someone on my team doing that and Gong will show my entire team doing that, um, it becomes incredibly powerful because now you have a coaching thing where you can actually go to your team and say, hey, look, um, I noticed that you're spending 75% of your time talking. Well, I think we should dial it back a little bit. Maybe let's, let's dial it back to 50% and maybe down to 40% because in the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, the most interesting topic of anybody, anybody in the world, is themselves, right? Get people to talk about themselves, but don't make it seem like you're just trying to get them to talk about themselves. Like it's, it seems very manufactured. Don't do that. That's just a little tip over there. Survey Monkey, as marketers, stop making decisions based off of your gut, get feedback. Analytics, like Google Analytics, is quantitative in which it gives you numbers and you can analyze that data to make decisions. But there's this whole other set of data called qualitative data. That's where people are giving you feedback. You're not gonna get that feedback for an internet company unless you ask for it. So ask for it through surveys and you can use SurveyMonkey. It's really affordable. Uh, they also have a free plan and you can get tons of insights using SurveyMonkey. It's free, it's cool if you're an SEO. It's Google Search Console. So let's take a look at my screen right here. 
So with Google Search Console, there's a lot of different options. It can show me issues I have with my index or crawl issues perhaps, and also looking at the search analytics section, which shows me how certain pages are doing, how I'm ranking for certain keywords, and it can also show me the sitemap that I have. Are there any issues with my sitemap? It's just easy, right? It's very complimentary to Google Analytics if you have Google Analytics, and I'm assuming most of you do. That way you're able to look across the board how you're doing on the analytics front and also from a search perspective too. And the cool thing is you can actually sync those two together and you can get more benefit when you have GA and Google Search Console connected together. IZOTO, I-Z-O-O-T-O, -O -O, I believe that's how you spell it. And what IZOTO is, it'll help you Take all the people that, let's say, went to your product pages on your e-commerce site or your checkout page, they don't fully buy, it gets them through push notification to subscribe to your website. And then what you can do is it segments out your list. You can send those people specific offers, uh, specific ways to get them uh, through push. It'll get them back and it'll try to get them to convert or add that product to their cart or maybe even showcase another product that's similar. And the beautiful part about this is even for the people that buy on your site, by getting them to subscribe through a push using tools like iZooTo, what you can do is when you have the holiday specials like Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever it may be, you can again get people back to your site for the sales and the promos, and then boom, you'll notice an uptick in revenue. Supermetrics is top of mind for me because we're putting together some reports for our all hands meeting today at uh, at the agency. And um, basically it, it makes some very powerful reports and they have templates too, because uh, lazy guys like me, I, li I just like using templates that make you look really smart. And it's, it's, it's perfect. Like if you're the client services business, you can show your clients as well. If you do an agency like Neil and I, you can show your clients. So I like using Supermetrics. Um, it makes it easy also to report on our content efforts as well, our SEO efforts, a lot of different stuff you typically wouldn't see um, just trying to you know, dig through Google Analytics. It's, it's all out there, it makes it easy. Ahrefs, uh, Ahrefs has a lot of features. The one I specifically like or favor the most out of all their features in their tool set is a link intersect. Link building is getting harder and harder. Take three of your competitors, put them in there, then put your URL in there because it'll have a box for your URL. It'll show you all the sites that link to your competitors that don't link to you. If you know that someone links to multiple of your competitors, there's a higher chance when you message them, they're also gonna link to you. But if you just message them and tell them to link to you, probably not gonna get a link. You have to more so see what contexts are linking to your competition and create a similar context or similar situation in which they're then gonna be willing to link to you. Outreach is great because it allows you to set up sequences. It allows you to automatically follow up with people through email. You can set tasks for yourself. Basically what you need to do, you gotta find a bunch of emails out there, load them into Outreach, make sure you scrub the list, and then Outreach is gonna help you on an automated basis send out emails, and it's gonna help you basically throttle the emails too, so you're not sending too many emails out per day, so you're not gonna get filtered. Nacho Analytics, so what most people don't know is Nacho Analytics actually allows you to look at your competitors and you can see their top referring pages, their top landing pages as well. And you think, you're thinking to yourself, how, what does this have to do with PPC? Well, guess what? If you figure out what their top performing pages are, you can see the top traffic sources, you're gonna come up with different ideas for your PPC campaign and that's gonna help you grow faster. Profit well, that helps you maximize or not even maximize, it helps you find out what your lifetime value of your customer is. I know a lot of you guys aren't in software, um, but I'm a big believer that you need to know the lifetime value of your customer because some of them keep coming back, they purchase again, there's upsells, there's downsells. The reason I like knowing this number, I'm not saying you should do everything to optimize it or maximize it because I know as marketers, a lot of us aren't necessarily the best at the conversion angle, but there's one simple trick. If you know your lifetime value of your customer and you know your profit margins, you can then know how much you can spend to acquire a customer. Without that metric, you're not gonna be able to grow as fast as you want. I don't care if you're in e-commerce, you need to know your lifetime value of your customer. Amazon knows it. When you go to Amazon and you buy, they know how many more times you're gonna come back and buy, and that's why they have things like prime shipping where you can get it in two days. It's all about optimizing for how much money you're gonna make in the long run, not the short run. Ad beat. AdBeat allows you to look at your competitors' ads so you can see what video ads are running, what display ads are running. 
how their ads are trending over time, how much they're spending over time. I wouldn't say the, tr the, the spend is the big deal, it's the trend of the money. If, if all of a sudden they just go flat, that just means they stop spending, right? The trends, the trend lines for the most part with these tools are fairly accurate. I would say though, in terms of the dollar amount, it's not that accurate, okay? The, the good thing about AdBeat too is it's gonna show you so much more competitive information and you can make it into a slide and make it really impressive if you have clients. What I like about LinkedIn Sales Navigator is, well, LinkedIn has a lot of data out there and now it gives you the ability to see companies that are using certain technologies. So if a site is using HubSpot, for example, which is a CRM, or they're using Marketo, for example, I can find those people, or I can find certain titles, I can find certain company sizes as well in terms of employee size and second degree connections, people in groups and things like that. I like LinkedIn Sales Navigator for that purpose. BuzzSumo allows you to basically pick a good topic and pick a topic that's trending well. So if I go here to my screen, I'm logged into BuzzSumo right here. Let's say I wanna write something about content marketing. So I type in content marketing right here, okay? I can see the most popular topics, what's working well, what's been shared the most, what's been linked to the most. Also at the same time, I can look at the trending topics as well. So I can look at trending topics, I can dive into a topic too, see who's doing the best there, and then also have a bunch of other options, but we're not gonna go into those because we're just talking about content here. Balance Exchange, it's the most complex tool slash service that I've seen for e-commerce. They can do cool stuff like if someone goes and adds stuff to their car on their iPhone, they're not logged into your e-commerce site, they're just a random user, then they hop onto their desktop computer, they can automatically add those items back to the car even if the user was never signed in. They can do some really cool and amazing stuff to improve the experience. Again, it's not a cheap tool. Companies like JetBlue use it. It's super expensive. It's typically somewhere in the six figures, but it really helps boost your conversions. Loom, that's L-O-O-M, it's useloom.com, I think, or dot, yeah, I think it's dot com. But uh, Loom is actually adding brand new features. So what they allow you to do is you can you can record screencasts on the fly. There's like a little Chrome extension I'm looking at right now. So you can do screencasts, it can show your video as well. So as we all know, video is a lot more personal. So let's say you are a marketer, you're trying to show someone on your team something, um, you can do that. Um, the new version that's coming out, let's say you're, you're coming from a sales perspective as well. Um, you are able to add call to actions at the end of the video and you can also draw on the screen as you're doing screencasts So it becomes a lot more interactive So just think about all the possibilities when it's very easy for you to create a video on the fly Instead of writing out a really long email and I just know that you know when you are able to show your face it, it just makes things a lot more personal and people are able to build that connection with you So loom is something that would definitely help you kick butt not only from a marketing perspective, but from a sales perspective ClickFlow, so this is Eric's tool. I know a lot of you guys haven't used it yet. I like it because you can just A-B test your title tags and figure out how to get the maximum amount of search traffic. Uh, and that's really important because these days, search just isn't about, hey, how many links are you building or what's your on-page SEO? It's really simple. Google wants to show the best results at the top. If people do a search and most people click on the second listing instead of the first one, they're gonna eventually shift the second one above the first listing. And what Click will allow you to do is A-B test your title tag so that way you can get the maximum amount of search rankings without trying to improve your on-page SEO or improve you know, how many links are coming to your page or site in total. Wicked Reports is awesome because it allows you from a multi-touch attribution standpoint, and you don't have to pay an arm and a leg, this is good for small businesses that are starting out, you can see how people are behaving in your campaigns. Are they going to Facebook and then Google and then are, are they doing something else? Or you can see, let's say someone visits your site, maybe they don't buy till six months later, but you can see the true six month ROI of a client um, after a period of time or a customer, I should say. So this is good for e-commerce. This is good for, uh, let's say software as well, where you can kind of track it and you, where you're not just saying, oh, what's the ROI after seven days or what's the ROI after 30 days? You wanna know after six months what the true ROI is. Zapier. You're gonna be using a lot of different social channels. You're gonna do a lot of content repurposing. Zapier can help automate a lot of this. They can connect all your marketing apps together. So that way when you send out uh, or do a blog post, it can connect with HubSpot and send out an email blast or drip or whatever other solution you're using. Or when you get a new lead into HubSpot, you know, you can end up using Zapier and passing that information over into one of your other tools like Salesforce or whatever it may be. But it helps connect everything together. So that way your marketing team doesn't have to build technology to start making all these tools and apps work friendly with each other. 
Cubana, um, you know, this might sound complex, right? For those of you just getting started with e-commerce, but it is ERP software. It's inventory management. Like what is all this stuff, right? So in the world of e-commerce, it can get really crazy, really fast, which is why maybe Neil and I don't do e-commerce that much because it's like, yeah, you got to manage this inventory here. You got to manage like all this logistics, all these different tools, all these different integrations. Like how do you get everything to play together? Right? So what Scubana does, and I, I like this this word because I come from a gaming background, um, they call it God mode for e-commerce, right? You're basically able to plug everything together. You have one kind of system that you're able to use, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. I was talking to some people, and they were saying like, you know, other systems they'll they'll take a percentage of your rev of your revenue. Um, Scubana's revenue uh, revenue model is not like that. So check it out. It's S K U B A N A Scu or Scubana. SEM Rush is a competitor to Ahrefs, but I like it because sometimes when it comes from a, to a keyword perspective and how a site is doing, sometimes I like how SEM Rush is laid out more and I like cross-referencing the two tools. I had the luxury of being able to look at uh, uh, both of these and you can see when I type in content marketing, for example, with SEM Rush, we can see the top results. Ahrefs can do this as well, but they also have some other tools in here like content template. They have an SEO audit template that we use to collect leads on our website. And you can see the trends over time for a certain keyword as well and also related keywords. So I like the way the user experience on SEM Rush, I would say, is a little better than Ahrefs. And again, I like cross referencing the two. AAM Tell. So what this is is push notifications. You guys all see them in your browsers. Um, this allows you to get traffic back to your website. Uh, there's also a free version, which I have called subscribers. If you're a blogger, that works really well. But the reason I'm mentioning AAMTEL, the segmentation is really amazing. So let's say you have someone who goes to your checkout page, but they don't go to your thank you page. It doesn't matter if you're selling info, SaaS, uh, products like e-commerce. If someone doesn't go to your checkout page, I mean, if they don't go to your thank you page, you know they haven't purchased, you can set things up in AAMTEL where for those users, you can send them notifications to try to get them back to your site and convert them, whether it's coupon codes or offers. You can do the same thing, let's say, for offering upsells. So someone buys from you, they go to your thank you page, but they don't take the upsell. You can then easily target that just individual person and then present them with a different upsell or a downsell through push notifications. Grammarly helps you check mistakes and avoid plagiarism. I actually had the Grammarly, one of the co-founders on the Growth Everywhere podcast recently, and they are doing really well. I mean, they've raised over $100 million and this is a couple years deep into the business. So they're doing really, really well. Ever webinar, video is really hot as Eric and I have mentioned over the last year or two, yeah. uh, but it's getting hotter and hotter. You're gonna see more of it in 2019. There's so many players in the space. There's so many competitors. It's hard to stand out. The one thing you can do to stand out is build a relationship. Webinars are a great way. And I know it takes too much time to create webinars. So I'm telling you to do evergreen webinars. And what Evernote, Ever Webinar allows you to do is record a webinar once and continue to play it over and over again. And it somewhat seems live. You can even have people man your chat in real time. So part of it is going to be fully live. We should check this out. It's a great way to boost your conversion numbers and revenue while building an amazing relationship with your audience. I really like Front because it is basically collaborative email inboxes. So if I saw Neil and if I got an email and then I wanted to delegate it over to Neil, I can actually assign that one email, even though it's in my personal inbox, I can assign it to Neil. It becomes available to Neil. And then we can also chat about it uh, and collaborate on that email. So I also think it's really good because the CRM we use is base. Um, it syncs with base and base doesn't have like a native kind of Gmail integration. So it just makes our life a lot easier, makes us move a lot faster from a marketing, also from a sales perspective as, as well. So you think about support, you think about sales, you think about marketing, it all moves much faster because a lot of us kind of live in our email inboxes and Front makes it a lot easier. The next tool I have for you is SpyFu. It's not as popular as SEMrush and Ahrefs, but it still has a lot of good data and it's a lot cheaper than SEMrush or Ahrefs and you can get very similar results. Not as good, but still good enough where you know it'll be like 90 plus percent of what you need. Hold.io, what it basically does is it allows you to basically find the most qualified leads. Let's say you're getting maybe 10,000 visitors a month to your site. Well, you can find maybe the most five qualified instead of trying to filter for everyone. Cause a lot of the vast majority of your leads are going to be unqualified people that are just tire kickers. You can see over here, 
Um, you got cold email lists, newsletters, trial signups. Maybe these people are not the people that you wanna go for. You wanna go for the three stars up here, the, the qualified leads. Those are the people that you wanna go for at the end of the day. So what Hold does is it allows you to connect a bunch of different connectors that you have, a um, bunch of different tools that you're using. So you could be using Clearbit, for example. Uh, you could be using Salesforce. You could be using HubSpot. Look, I'm giving you all this technical jargon right now, but the idea is that we're using so many, so much different software nowadays that you wanna connect everything together and make this kind of one single source of truth. That way you're able to do cool things like get your sales reps to focus on the most high value targets, right? So if we look at the screen over here, if it's a good fit trial, it's a good trial conversion, you have your sales rep jump on it. Now, if it is, it's a medium fit trial sign up where it's like a, like a trial conversion, stick them on automated nurture sequence, but not every lead should be treated the same. You should prioritize accordingly. You prioritize your time by watching videos like this because you know you're going to grow. You want cutting edge sales strategies, right? So here's another cool thing you can do. If we're looking at the screen, we can see that we can basically target anybody that's reached out as a lead on our site. Maybe they came through as a chat lead. Maybe they came through HubSpot. Maybe they came through Salesforce. And then we can layer on some segments. We can layer on some attributes. So we can say, okay, anybody that's reached out as a lead. And then if they're, uh, if they have more than 50 employees, okay, great. We'll, we'll use Clearbit to tell us that, or we'll use data nice to show us if their revenues are greater than uh, $5 million. So these are all these connectors are telling you all these different things. So now you can segment them out and then you can reach out to them accordingly. Clearbit, you're messaging a lot of people, but do you really know who they are? Yes, you can go do a LinkedIn search and try to figure out their job title and take the time to do that. Or you can just use Clearbit and it connects with a lot of the tools you're already using. For example, if you're using Drift for chat, Clearbit will tell you once they give you the email, who they are, their job title, what they do. And this will be like, oh, cool. I should spend more time with this lead because they're a potential customer and this is the decision maker or hey you know what based off the data i'm getting for clearbit this person really isn't qualified because a lot of the leads that you'll get from a marketing perspective people will lie on things like budget or how much money they have to spend or how big their company is and clearbit will help you verify all of this in an automated way so that way you're not wasting time on the wrong leads all right, so hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments which tool you think I missed or which one you plan to use. And also, whatever platform you are on, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe to this channel. It helps us grow. And we'll see you tomorrow.